Hello everybody and welcome back to the Galaxy Administration course. In this session, we're going to be going through running remote jobs for Galaxy using Pulsar. My name's Simon Gladman and I'm one of the administrators of Galaxy Australia. And I'm also a bioinformatician at Melbourne Bioinformatics at the University of Melbourne. Okay, to start off, we need to go to the training website. So the Galaxy training website, training.galaxyproject.org. And you'll see this, we're going to click on Galaxy Server Administration, which I'm sure you've already done three or four times at least this course. And we're going to scroll down the administration topics until we get to the one that says running jobs on remote resources with Pulsar. And we're going to click on the hands on. Okay. So a couple of questions first. Um, hopefully by the end of this, you'll understand how Pulsar works. Um, you'll be able to install and configure RabbitMQ, a message queuing server. You'll be able to install and configure a Pulsar server on a remote machine. And you'll be able to get Galaxy to send jobs to that remote server. Just some requirements before we move on. Um, hopefully you've all done the um, Ansible um, introduction. Um, installation of Galaxy using Ansible, connecting Galaxy to a compute cluster, and you've also completed reference data with CVMFS. If you haven't completed all of these, I suggest you go back and do them in the order that they're listed here, because uh, without um, these prerequisites, this tutorial will not work. Okay, and the other thing you will need is a second virtual machine or a a server or a second server or a virtual machine on which to deploy Pulsar and then have Galaxy send jobs to. Okay, so how are we going to do that is um, on the spreadsheet that lists all the training machines, which hopefully you all know about by now um, and have access to. This, this spreadsheet here, um, Yours will look a little bit different. This is the one we're using to record the video. So it only has a limited number of machines. However, the one that we're using for the course will have all the machines listed here. You'll see there's two tabs, there's VMs and there's Pulsar. Hopefully you have one assigned to you, one of these training machines assigned to you, which has Galaxy on it. And you've already gone through and installed Galaxy on it everywhere. But if you click on this Pulsar tab, you'll notice that there are a bunch of other machines and there'll be more than one listed here. At the moment, there's only one listed because it's me. Um, so what I would like you to do is pick one of these machines that are listed on this tab and write your name next to one of the ones that's listed. Hopefully one that doesn't have a name on it already. So I'm going to um, select this one. So it has uh, the IP address, it has a, um, a DNS entry and it also has a password and I've assigned myself to it. Okay, we don't really need to worry about this just yet, but um, it's always good to claim a virtual machine early on. Okay, so we'll go back to the tutorial tab. Okay, so hopefully you've all watched the, the video of the slide show and you have a little bit of understanding of what's going on with Pulsar. But basically, this is a bit of a recap. Pulsar is Galaxy, the Galaxy Project's remote job running system. It was written by job John Chilton of the Galaxy project. And it is a little Python application that runs on a machine and talks to Galaxy and let allows Galaxy to send it jobs. And then Pulsar will run those jobs on behalf of Galaxy and then send the results back to Galaxy again, which is all pretty cool. And the best part is that these two machines, so the Galaxy server and the Pulsar server, don't need to be anywhere near one another. All they need to be able to do is talk to one another over a network or the internet. Okay, um, there's a lot of documentation here about overview, etc. Um, so the overview is actually quite cool. You can see here what we're going to set up today. So basically, here's our um, your Galaxy machine. On it, we've installed Galaxy, and inside it we have a job con file and a Galaxy file system, and we've run jobs on it, and we've uh, played around with Sloan queues, and we've played around with reference data, etc., etc. So hopefully, you know all about this little green box here. 
Well, so that Galaxy can talk to a Pulsar computer, Pulsar server, especially a Pulsar server that's configured in message queuing mode, which is the mode that we're going to use for this tutorial. We need to install another server program on our Galaxy server called RabbitMQ. And within that um, application, we need to set up a queue so that Galaxy can send the queue a job and that Pulsar can monitor that queue to know when it has jobs. And so it acts kind of like an intermediary between the Galaxy server and the Pulsar server. So hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. Um, but how it will exactly work is that um, Galaxy will send a message to the RabbitMQ server on the Pulsar server's particular queue. So uh, this little queue here, saying that there is a job to be run and then we'll monitor the queue for job status updates. So um, as the job gets processed, Galaxy will be monitoring it and it will, you know, like all Galaxy jobs in our history, we'll get a gray box to start with, then it will turn yellow and then it will turn green when it's finished. Um, the Pulsar server monitors the queue. So this Pulsar in MQ mode monitors the same queue and when a job appears, it will take control of it. The Pulsar server then reads in the metadata, etc., and um, uh, downloads the required data from the Galaxy server using curl. So it, it pulls uh, the input data out of the Galaxy file system into the remote file system using curl. The Pulsar server will then install any tools required tool dependencies using Conda or in fact um, Singularity. And then the Pulsar server will start running the job using its local mechanism and will send a message to the queue, this queue here, stating that the job has started. Once the job is finished running, the Pulsar server will send a message to the queue stating that the job has finished, this queue here again, and Galaxy will have picked that up and will change the colors in the history. And then Pulsar will then send the output data and the output metadata back to Galaxy server by using curl again. And then the Galaxy server will acknowledge the job status and then close the job on the queue here. Um, some notes just before we move on. Uh, RabbitMQ uses the advanced message queuing protocol. Um, transporter files and metadata occur via curl from the Pulsar end in this tutorial, but you can use other file transport methods and they're located in this tip box here. Uh, RabbitMQ is written in Erlang and really doesn't add much uh, overhead to the Galaxy VM. Although in larger installations such as Galaxy Europe or Galaxy Main or Galaxy Australia, we have a separate server to run RabbitMQ for us. And you may have heard in my slideshow that um, there are a number of different ways of configuring Pulsar. And we can configure Pulsar in uh, MQ mode or message queuing mode or the RESTful mode. And uh, if you're interested in why we're not using the RESTful interface here, um, it's a, a bit of an explanation here. Okay, let's move on with the uh, first part of this tutorial. And the first part is we need to install and configure a message queuing system into our Galaxy server VM. So we're going to install and configure RabbitMQ, which is a, an AMQP server application onto our Galaxy server VM. And to do that, we're going to use a role, um, uh, a slightly modified version of a role that was written by Jason Royal to install RabbitMQ and it's currently being uh, hosted by Galaxy Europe. So hopefully you understand all about Ansible and you understand what's going on here. So I'm going to switch over to my uh, shell here. I'm going to log into my machine. So I'm going to go SSH Ubuntu at get, let's get 14, get 14. I'm pretty sure that's my one. Yep, cat 14. And here's my password, which I'll copy. Put my password in. Okay, so I'm logged in to that machine. I might just make it a little bit bigger, to make it easier for people to see. All right, so I can see what we have in our root directory here, my user root directory. So I'm going to go to the Galaxy folder and you'll know all about everything that's in here. We have our requirements file, our Ansible config, our Galaxy YAML playbook, our hosts file, our group bars file, our group bars directory, 
our roles directory and a templates directory. Okay, so we'll go back to here. The first thing we need to do is we need to install a couple of roles. We, today for this tutorial, we're gonna be using the use Galaxy EU Rabbit MQ role. And we're also gonna be using the Galaxy Project.Pulsar role. So firstly, we need to basically copy all of this and put it into our requirements.yaml file. So I open it in the editor and paste. And you can see now we have that in our requirements.yaml file. I will now close it. And I will install those roles into our um, roles folder using the usual command, Ansible Galaxy install minus p roles minus r requirements.yaml. So I'll copy that and paste it here. And you can see we're downloading two roles and that's complete. And now if we look in our roles directory, go back up to the top, you can see here that we have uh, use Galaxy EU Rabbit MQ and Galaxy Project Pulsar. And they're the ones that we've put in there today. Great, so we'll go back to the directory above. Okay, so now we're gonna go and configure RabbitMQ. So there's a bunch of different things we need to do after we install Rabbit. We need to tell it about who's allowed to use it. So we need to give it some usernames. And we also need to develop some virtual hosts. And this is uh, Rabbit's way, virtual hosts are Rabbit's way of defining uh, the broad Q group. So a group of queues. And so um, different users have access to different uh, virtual hosts. And so uh, we're going to set up a virtual host for the, um, the Galaxy server. And we are going to allow a particular user to use that virtual host and um, communicate um, to Rabbit and add messages or remove messages from, from those queues. All right. Um, one of the things that's really important here is um, when Rabbit needs to be able to communicate via a network on a particular port. And so we need to make sure that the Rabbit MQ has a port open in our firewall for our Galaxy server. And the default port number on our, on, for that is 5671. So all we need to do is um, allow Rabbit to listen on uh, 0 .0 .0 .0 0 0.0.0.0.5671. Um, for a local host, we can define a different port for it to listen on. And in fact, for local host connections, we can set it to 5672. But for our um, internet access, we set it to 5671 and we need to uh, open that port in our firewall, and which we've already done on all of the uh, training machines. Okay, so let's actually get on with configuring RabbitMQ now. As you can see in the tutorial, the first thing it tells us to do is to edit the group files, all.yaml file. Um, this is a file that is um, applied to all hosts when we run Ansible playbooks. And uh, what we want to do is we want to add our RabbitMQ um, Q password into that so that when we uh, run Ansible on our Pulsar machine, they will also get the same password. So I'll go here, vim group vars all.yaml, and hopefully you should have um, cvmfs in here already. And I will copy that line and paste it here. Now, I really, really want to change this. Um, it's not a good idea to use the default password from a tutorial in anything. It's uh, not very secure. So I will just make up some long password and I'll get rid of. And you can put anything you like in here. It doesn't need to be, yeah, as long as it's long and doesn't make any sense, it's fine. All right, so I'll close that. Now we need to edit the uh, group bars galaxy service YAML file and we need to um, add some sections in. Um, in the Nginx, sorry, in the cert box section, we need to let Rabbit have access to the uh, um, shared key. Uh, we also need to restart Rabbit MQ server when we um, renew a cert bot. And then we need to 
do some RabbitMQ settings. Um, I'm not sure how you've been doing it in the past, uh, whether or not you want to go through and um, copy this into a patch file and then run patch. Um, I prefer to actually go through it line by line. So that's what I'm going to do. There I am, group bars. Galaxy servers, here we are. And where are we? We're in the third part section, which is down here, I believe, for mine. Third part. All right. So below Nginx, we need to add in RabbitMQ. And then below here, we need to add in system restart. RabbitMQ server true. So I'll just cut and paste that. And then we need to do a whole bunch of stuff down the bottom of this file. We'll put it all the way down the bottom. Under the Slurm config that I have. All right, we want to add this whole section. Now we'll go through it quickly. Um, we need to set an admin password. Once again, we'll change this to be something. Um, we're going to specify the version of Rabbit that we're going to install, and that's fairly important. And that's because uh, Rabbit's written in Erlang, and Erlang is very finicky as to which versions of Erlang will run on which um, operating systems. And so we'll need to uh, be particular in the version of Rabbit that we install. And this one is this one will work on Ubuntu 20.04, um, which is our current operating system. There's a table at the RabbitMQ website that specifies the versions for different operating systems and versions of Erlang. Um, we also have, um, we're going to set up a RabbitMQ uh, plugin. We're going to add the RabbitMQ management plugin just in case we ever want to do some command line um, changes to RabbitMQ. And then we'll set up some config. We'll have a, a TCP listener. Um, on one on localhost at 5672 and then we'll have a secure shell listener um, at, um, open to the internet at 5671 and here are the SSL options that we'll, we will start. Um, we will then set up some vhosts. Um, we'll set up one. We'll set up a, a vhost for uh, Pulsar Galaxy AU and then we will um, set up some users. So we'll set up a user admin and we'll set up another user, Galaxy AU. The admin will have access to the root and Galaxy AU will have access to this new queue that we set up, this new vhost we set up before. And as you can see, we're going to be pulling the password out of our all.yaml file for this. All right. So I'm going to I'll just grab all of that and then fix it. And I will save that. Okay, and then I will update our Galaxy uh, um, playbook to include use Galaxy EU RabbitMQ. And we want to put it just above Nginx. It's kind of important that it goes above Nginx. And if you click on the tip, it'll tell you that some of the things There's a bit of a circular dependency problem going on, but we'll put it at the end. Galaxy. Use Galaxy. MQ. All right, so that's done. And now we run the playbook. So let's do that. And we need to put the minus U Ubuntu. Um, it doesn't say that here, but we need to do that for these machines. Hopefully you know this from the rest of the week. Oops. 
Uh, did I not add install it? No, oh, double S. I made a mistake. There you go. And now we will run the playbook. And I will use the minus U Ubuntu here. Um, um, hopefully you've been doing this all week. If not, um, I need to do it for this machine. Now, sometimes Erlang can take quite a while to install and uh, also Rabbit can take a while to install, but Erlang especially. And so I will probably um, pause the video recording while Erlang's installing, just so you're not sitting there looking at a bunch of dead air for a long time and try and keep the file size down a bit. When we get to that part, so um, yours may take longer than mine. All right, so I'm going to pause the video for a little bit. Um, this is just because Erlang takes you know, five minutes or so to install. Ah, it's finished. Okay, so now it's in uh, importing the RabbitMQ um, package and installing it. It shouldn't take too long. There we go, it's done. It's adding the hosts, um, adding the users. It removes the guest user because we don't really want to have a guest user. I need to change a different long password. Never mind. I can go back and change that in a minute. Okay, so now hopefully we have Rabbit MQ running and let's have a look and see if it's working. It says system CTL status Rabbit MQ server. So let's do that. System CTL status Rabbit MQ server. And it's running. Well, that's pretty cool. Um, very nice. Let's see if we can have all the interfaces running. So we'll do a diagnostic status. We'll see what happens. Yep, we have everything running. Fantastic. That's really good. Um, just to make sure, we'll do. Um, quick curl, so let's do a curl to localhost 5672. So curl local, oh, localhost 5672. Yep, that worked. And we'll do the same thing to 5671 with a minus K. Yes. There we go. All right, it's working. Beautiful. Okay, now the next section of this tutorial is to install and configure Pulsar on a remote machine. So hopefully we uh, have access to another machine and if you go to the Pulsar tab, you'll see um, you should have a list of machines here and you have your name next to one as we discussed earlier in this tutorial. Um, so this is the one that I'm going to be using for this tutorial. So that's pretty good. Okay. Um, so we need to install and configure Pulsar on our remote machine. 
So we need to create a new Ansible playbook for this one. We don't really want to run the Galaxy playbook on, on the uh, new machine. We want to run um, a different playbook. So we're going to create a, a new playbook. Um, we're going to use the Galaxy Project .polsar Ansible role to, to um, install Pulsar and configure it all for us. There's quite a lot of information about some of the different dependencies and environments and users and configurations that we, we can set. And if you are interested, you can read all of this. Um, we will be setting it up so that uh, Pulsar will automatically install tools for us using Conda. And we'll need to know the fully qualified domain name or the IP address of the Galaxy server that we intend to um, of the Galaxy server that we install Gravit on. And we'll also need to know the fully qualified domain name of our, um, of our Pulsar server. But first things first, we need to create a new group variables file. And this one is going to be called Pulsar servers. So let's do that. Here I am. Oh, I might just start again. Control. All right. Here I am, group bars. Pulsar servers .yaml. .yaml. Okay, and we want to put all this stuff in here and I'll copy it in first and then we will uh, go through it bit by bit. Okay, oops. Piabu is on them. Okay. So in the top part here where it says Galaxy Server URL, we need to put in the actual fully qualified domain name of our Galaxy Server there. And as you may remember, mine is GAT14. So I'm going to copy that. And we're going to paste that here. Okay. The next thing, we're going to install Pulsar on the remote machine, on our Pulsar machine, to slash mount slash Pulsar, um, just so we know where it is. Um, we're going to use pip to install it. We need some um, uh, libraries so we can do SSL. We want to set it up using systemd, and we want to use the webless version of Pulsar. Basically, that just means we're going to use the message queuing version and not the uh, REST API. We need to install some dependencies. We're going to install um, PyOpenSSL, PyCurl, Drama, so we can use um, Slurm or if we want to. We're going to install Kombu, which is part of the message queuing system, and some utilities. Uh, we'll then have to set some uh, config for Pulsar. We're going to um, uh, auto initialize Conda so that Conda will be installed on the first run of Pulsar and we will auto install tools as required on our Pulsars. Um, in production, after you've got most of the tools installed, you probably want to turn this off just in case you have 50 users at once all try to run a new tool on Pulsar and then they'll have 50 concurrent installs happening. Um, you may want to uh, turn that to false and manually run the Conda creates. But yeah, for now we'll leave it to true. Um, we'll set our staging directory, our persistence directory, tool dependency directory. Now this is the important bit here. We're going to set our message queue URL. And you can see here that we are going to um, use a special protocol called Python AMQP. Or PyAMP Q, PyAMQP. Um, we're going to have the user Galaxy AU. We're going to grab our password out of our all.yaml file. We're going to use our Galaxy server URL, which we've set at the top of this file. And then we're going to connect to the port 5671 and we're going to look for the local host, sorry, the vhost of um, Pulsar Galaxy AU and we're going to set SSL to equal one. All right, now the really important thing here is this double slash here. We don't put in the double slash, it won't work. That's because when we defined the vhost, we had a slash in the front. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna set some um, um, AMQ protocol uh, settings. 
um, about the polling interval, um, whether or not we're going to retry to publish stuff after we finished. And then we are going to create a dependency resolvers file and we're going to add in um, Conda into that to, so that um, Pulsar will automatically um, Pulsar will automatically create Conda environments for us. All right, so that's done. So we'll save that. Go back to our configuration here. Um, if you want to run non-Conda tools, uh, you'll have to manually install them. It, it, it's quite complicated. The, the best thing to do is just use Conda or Singularity. Um, there's some documentation on how to set up Singularity if you want to later. Okay, now we need to add something to our host file so we know Ansible knows where to uh, actually go and find our thing. So I'm going to copy that and I will go to make a new file and we'll, oh sorry, we're going to edit our host file. And hosts. All right. So down here, I'm going to create a new group. We're going to call it Pulsar Servers. And my Pulsar server is this one, GAT18. And it also says here that we need to set the Ansible user to the username for logging with, which will be Ubuntu. So we need to say Ansible user equals Ubuntu. Okay, so we can finish that. And now we need to create a new playbook. So this playbook is going to look very similar to the one that we created for our Galaxy server. It just has a lot less stuff in it. And in the beginning, we're going to have a pre-task where we install some of the requirements we need for um, Pulsar. So we're going to copy that. We'll call our playbook pulsar.yaml. that in so you can see we're going to operate on the host Pulsar servers which is only one of we're going to install some packages in the beginning we're going to make sure that Ubuntu's got its build stuff it's got git it's got Python 3 um, the dev libraries it's got uh, loop curl um, and loop curl open SSL version uh, we've got loop SSL dev and we've got virtual env installed um, and then we are going to uh, run the CVMFS role and uh, you think, why are we running a CVMFS role? Well, we're going to run the CVMFS role on our Pulsar server so that the Pulsar server has access to the same reference data that our Galaxy server does. And that's pretty cool. That means that we can um, get our Pulsar server to run um, mapping jobs with BWA and have access to all the, the BWA references automatically, just like our Galaxy server does which is actually pretty cool. And then finally we'll run the Pulsar role. That's pretty much all we have to do. All right, so I will save that. And then we need to run the playbook. Ansible playbook, pulsar.yaml. Okay, so we're going to run Pulsar.yaml. Now you remember this time, we're not actually running the local host we're going to be running on a other machine which is remote to us now we are gathering facts all right so we're installing some packages if we want to see what's going on i can log into this machine that we'll go to another shell here this is h try to add oh let me do the at all 
and the password is this. And now I'm logging into our remote one. If I run top, you can see that it's uh, running up to get at the moment, which is pretty cool. All right, in fact, it's got quite a long way. It's got uh, installed some packages. It's installing a CVMFS as we're speaking, which is awesome. That won't take too long. Have a look. Oh no, here we go. There it goes. Checking it for setup now. All right, it's creating a Pulsar user. Installing pip. And installing Pulsar from pip. Now it's installing some Pulsar dependencies, um, all of the ones that we specified, so um, PyOpenSSL and Kombu, etc. Running some config files. All right, and it's done. Okay, so there we go. Um, so now we've just run an Ansible script to install Pulsar on a remote machine. So not GAT14, we've installed it on GAT18. Um, so now we're gonna look at um, into that machine. We're gonna have a look in the Mount Pulsar directory. So I've already logged into it, which is nice. I've got top running, get rid of that. And we'll have a look, we'll see CD slash Mount slash Pulsar. You can see here we have four directories, config, depths, files, and bin. Um, in the config, there are the config files, so app.yaml, which is the uh, one that um, determines how Pulsar runs, dependency resolves, which tells Pulsar to use Conda, and then some other bits and pieces. Um, the depths is where Conda will be installed. And inside files, there is persisted data and staging. So whenever um, Pulsar pulls data from Galaxy, it will put it into the staging directory. And every time Pulsar runs a job, the job working directory for that particular job will be put inside the staging directory here. And it will be done by job number. And then obviously we have a virtual environment for Pulsar. All right, so let's have a look and see if Pulsar's running. And it is, there you go. So it's currently installing Conda because we asked it to uh, do that automatically if you remember. 
And here you can see now that um, we have actually installed, oh, actually we're talking to um, the AMQP server. So you can see here that we're talking to it um, at that location and the heartbeats are all running. So excellent, it's working. Okay, so now we have Pulsar installed and running on our remote machine. The next thing we want to do is we want to tell Galaxy about our new Pulsar machine. So we've installed Rabbit on our Galaxy machine, but that's got nothing really to do with Galaxy. And we've installed Pulsar on our remote machine and we've got Pulsar to talk to our Rabbit server. But now we need to tell Galaxy about the Pulsar machine and the Rabbit server. So we need to do a couple of different things. We need to um, change the job comp file. Mostly, mostly we need to change the job comp file. And then we'll also need to tell Galaxy which tools to send to, or which jobs to send to Pulsar. And we mostly do that by tool. So we're going to get it to run PWA mem on the remote machines. Right, so the first thing we need to do is we need to add a whole bunch of stuff into the job conf. And so the way we're going to do this is we will clear the screen and then we will am templates, galaxy, config, job conf, and hopefully your job conf will look something like this. It may not look exactly like this. Um, I haven't done all of the uh, um, dynamic destination stuff that you guys probably have. All right, it says here in your that file in the plugin section, we need to add a new plugin. And this is our new plugin that we want to add. So I'm going to copy that. Go up. Sometimes the way you paste things is annoying. So we have a new plugin. Um, this one is of type Pulsar MQ job runner. And as you can see in this section, we give it the uh, AMQP URL with the password. And this time we point to localhost because this rabbit server is actually running on the same as the Galaxy server. So we can just point to localhost here, but we'll still use SSL. All right. And we're going to set the um, a republish time to 1200 seconds. Um, we'll acknowledge, we'll do some acknowledgements. Um, these are all um, AMQP settings that we want to set. Another one that's really important here is we want to use the Galaxy URL. And um, we're going to use the inventory host name for that, which is our fully qualified domain name. Uh, so this is the uh, the name in the file, sorry, in our host file. So it'll be get 14.oz.training.galaxyproject.eu. So that'll go here. And then the manager. All right, so that's done. And now we need to add a new destination to use that plugin. So we go down to the end of destinations and we'll add a new one in here. And we'll add in this destination. I knew that was going to happen.
Okay, so some important ones here. We've made a new destination called Polestar. We're using the Polestar runner. Um, we said the default file action is our remote transfer. So in other words, we want Polestar to handle the file transfers. And the dependency resolution, we want Pulsar to handle the dependency resolutions as well. So that means that Pulsar will use Condor if it needs to. Um, we need to tell Galaxy where the job directory is. So it's in our mount files, sorry, mount Pulsar file staging. And any persisted data will get put into mount Pulsar files persisted data. Um, we we're not going to get Pulsar to do the, the metadata. We'll get um, all the metadata updates will be done by Galaxy. Um, so we will need to rewrite the parameters so that the, the Pulsar paths um, are set instead of the Galaxy pathing. So in the command lines. And then we want, we're telling, here we're telling Pulsar to use the curl system for doing file transfers. Okay. And the last thing we need to do is we need to tell Galaxy which tools to send to Pulsar. And we're going to send BWA mem jobs to it and BWA jobs to it. So within the tools section of the job comp file down here, and you probably already have this, um, we're just going to add in these two lines here. Or in your case, change those two lines if they're already there. So we're going to put tool BWA and then we'll send BWA mem there as well. And this basically tells Galaxy that every time the tool BWA is run, please use the destination pulsar. Or BWA mem is run and use the destination pulsar. So we'll close that. Um, we've already installed BWA, or I have at least. Um, if you haven't already installed BWA, um, go to your Galaxy server, go to the admin section, click install and uninstall and search for BWA up here and click on it and um, you'll see an install button here if you haven't installed it I have already installed it okay um, and now we need to run the Galaxy playbook to update the job config and restart Galaxy. So let's do that. That's all playable. Galaxy minus U, you got to. You can see here it's changed the job con file. And so it will restart Galaxy for us. Okay, so that's all completed. Now, if we, um, we're still looking at the, the Pulsar log here, I might load the Galaxy log. So we'll do that with journal CTL. Okay, so we've got that. Running. So now whenever we do something on the Galaxy system, we'll be able to see what's going on here. All right, so how do we go about testing them? All right, we want to uh, go back to our Galaxy. We'll upload some, some files and we're going to run BWA mem and we're going to see what happens. 
we'll keep our fingers crossed while we're doing it. All right, so we want to um, grab these two fastq files out of Zenodo. All right, so upload, paste fetch data, paste those in, and we'll call them fastq sanger. Start. You can see here, our uploads are running in our log using the Sloan runner. That's done. We'll have a look at one of them. Yep, that looks like a fast queue file to me. All right, so the next thing it says to do is to uh, map with BWA mem um, against E. coli. Um, all right, let's do that. So we'll use BWA mem. So I'll go to mapping, BWA mem. I'll change this to Escherichia coli, pet end, mutant R1, and mutant R2. All right, and that's it. Yep. All right, let's watch what happens after we press execute. Execute. And you can see here, it's called the AMQ page, MQP, and it's published the setup. So now we'll go to here, and you can see here that Pulsar has picked up the fact that there's a new job. And it's also it realized that it doesn't have uh, BWA installed, and so here it is, it's creating BWA and installing SAM tools as well. All right, so hopefully when that's finished, it will run our job. So it's still installing, there we go, it's installed all of that stuff. Yeah, look here now, our job's running, because uh, Pulsar said, send the message to say that we're actually running the job, change the state to running. Hopefully it won't take too long to run. That's the galaxy log I'm looking at here. Put it in the pulsar log. And if you want to see what's going on on the pulsar machine, I can control C out of this and type top on a C. And you can see here we're running Oh, it looks like it's finished. Oh well. Oh no, it's still going. Sam tools is up to now. That's cool. And look at the log again. And it's publishing a new status update. The job complete. So it's published it, and we've got a green thing here. And if you look at a galaxy log, you can see here that it's got um, a message back here saying the job's been complete. And here we go. And so if we look at this file, you can see that it looks like a, um, a SAM file, but it's actually um, decompressing it on the fly. So there you go. Nice one. That worked. Okay, so you think, yeah, big deal. But basically what we've done is we've told Galaxy to run a job on a totally different computer without having a shared file system or anything like that. We've told Galaxy to send a job off to a remote computer, send off the um, input files and the, uh, the, tool, the job metadata the remote compute has then realized that it needs to install some tools. So it's just done that. And then it's run the job for Galaxy and then sent the results back to Galaxy again. And it's done this all over the internet, which is actually a pretty cool thing. Okay, so um, I just want to talk a little bit about Pulsar in production before we, before we finish today. 
um, for every different Pulsar server. And so for Galaxy Australia, we run currently run about four or five Pulsar servers when we're adding more all the time. And for each one, we need a new V host and a different user for that V host um, for each new Pulsar server. And then in the job conf, we need a new job runner with a connection string and a new destination for each um, Pulsar server. And in fact, for a couple of my servers, I have four or five different destinations with uh, different different settings. Um, in Europe, they do very similar things to what we do in Australia, except their, their network's a bit more extensive, and they actually even run a uh, Pulsar server in, in Melbourne, down here in Australia, um, just to show that we can actually do this you know, across the globe. Yeah, and there's a whole bunch of documentation um, for the European setup, if you're interested by following this link. All right, that is the conclusion of this tutorial. I hope you got something out of it. I hope you uh, enjoyed it. Um, if you could, could you please fill in the feedback form at the bottom of this tutorial to help us improve our content? Just tell us what you think was not very good or not very clear, or if you think it was awesome, please let us know that as well. And if you um, um, use this tutorial anywhere and you wish to cite it, then um, here are the links. Here are the uh, citations for this thing. And yeah, thank you very much, everyone, for your time. And I hope you enjoy the rest of the course. Thank you. And goodbye.